How long has Cold Eskimo been a band? Two and a half years. Two and a half. Is that is that that sounds about right? Yeah. Nick and Rochelle kind of started it. Yeah. It's it's been about two and a half years. I think we got started um, like around January or February of uh, 2011, and it was yeah. kind of one of those things where um, you know Rochelle and I had been writing sh- the songs, and um, it was tough for us to get motivated. So it was one of those things where we just kind of booked a show and said, hey, you know, the show is three months away. We're gonna get people together. We're gonna play some of these songs songs that we put together and you know we're just gonna put a deadline on it. I had never been in a band before. I always wanted to finish a song so I think that was I, I always put too much pressure on myself to finish a song. I don't know why but um, like that's we always wrote pieces of songs and like for the longest time I always write I always wrote um, pieces of songs and I just wanted to finish a whole one and so I thought I, I kind of worked well under pressure so I booked a date somewhere. Somebody asked us to play a show, and I was like, sure. And um, yeah, and then so we finished like three originals by then. So I think that was Rochelle's first experience. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Gary and Gary and I have played music together since almost mm-hmm. high school. So you know, whenever um, you know we knew that we wanted to put something together, we knew that we wanted Gary to be involved, and you know, we played we played shows with. You know, Julian and Julian's played in bands that we've always played with since since about high school. So I think the three of us have always been involved in like the Sacramento, you know, more more so on like you know the all ages, like the club retro, which was yeah, say, the underground give me, give me or some something. Some lineage, like, that. like would I know any of the uh, bands? Um, well, uh, Nick and Gary were in Nick and yeah, Hazel <laughs> Nick and Vine. Gary were Hazel and Vine. Oh, oh, sure. Hazel and Vine. So we played in like a yeah, indie indie pop band. Yes, yeah, so we played. A good band. Yeah, like four years or something like that. Four or five years, yeah. And it was kind of one of those things where you know it was, it was, it was, it was great to get all all that, but at the end of it, we kind of came away ready to be done with music for good. You know, we were just like kind of done with the all ages venues. We were done with the, uh, the you guys were sucking kinda... up to fourteen year olds. <laughs> kind of, it's tough, but um, you know, it was kind of one of those things where it really came out and you know. From Hazel and Vine, it kind of formed the foundation of Cold Eskimo, which was we wanted to come and we wanted to write songs that were for us, not for people, and we wanted to play shows that you know we would actually pay to get into. So instead of paying ten dollars for all age venues, which we knew most of our friends wouldn't do, you know we were going to play you know bars and you know have three dollar or five dollar cover nights.
like you were all nervous or did you were you just a natural and you've just got to I don't know I still think I get a really nervous playing like a new song like I still get that same those same nerves but um, it was probably so much new new material like I don't know I think I just put too much pressure on myself to like write like this I don't know to write like a perfect song or whatever even though they're not perfect songs at all but um <laughs> but um, I don't know like the first time we played there were so many friends that came out um, that I really felt the pressure but it it was so great like it's one of my still one of my favorite like memories that we've played together and now it's like I like even though the the older songs like um, the older songs like um, feel natural uh, <laughs> but uh, I don't know still when we play those newer songs I get really nervous so I just I don't know I, I feel comfortable singing in front of people but um, I don't know Let's talk um, about other bands in Sacramento. Uh, you know, I kind of like that um, because you guys have been playing around now. Aside from playing Fox and Goose, uh, Harlow's, Ace of Spades, uh, I don't know where else you guys are Davis, bouncing around. Davis, Davis. Has been really yeah, we, so yeah. Who we do love Sophia's Pie Kitchen. Who do you get to see when you're playing these shows? Who do you like playing with and who do you get to see? Social Studies was amazing. Oh, For sure. Yeah. We're big fans. Yeah, so. and that was at Sophia's down in Davis. They're Davis. out of the Bay Area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, our... our I think we can say that our favorite Sacramento band is uh, some friends of ours in a band called Sun Monks. Yeah. And they're one of those bands that we feel like nobody really knows about. And, you know, it's it's a two-piece band and just incredibly talented musicians. And nowadays it's kind of funny because with bands it's become so much more than just playing music and playing good shows. It's more about, you know, your presence on Facebook or, you know, how many people you can get to come out to your shows. And... I don't know, to hear a band like Sun Monks who, you know, when we first started listening to them, you know, Rochelle and I would show up to their shows and, you know, we'd be one of ten people or something. And to see how amazing those experiences, even with smaller crowds and, you know, to see them grow, I think they're awesome. I don't know, who, who else in Sacramento? Sea of Bees? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're well established, but, you know, Jules was out here tonight. And yeah. she I also loves love Sam Elliott. Oh, yeah. He's oh, kind yeah. of back and forth between here and Seattle, but... Um... I love Sam. Yeah, that kid can write a pop song. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. <laughs>
found out he had moved beyond the all age thing, went into the 21, $3 thing, fox and goose, whatever. Um, explain the, uh, or describe the, 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 the growth from there, because it seems like you've been doing bigger things. I mean, this was a nice show tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, what's been the organic uh, uh, trail you guys have? Oh, uh... well, no, it's, uh, it's not very specific, I guess. I think. I think we've just written the momentum. I mean, um, were there were there playing, landmarks? Were there actual? Were, were there specific moments shows? Yeah, I think so. Specific you know? shows, I think. I yeah. think so. You we know, got we got to play, play with Foles at Ace of Spades, and that was probably. I think even one before of the that, shows, I yeah. feel like it's weird to talk about money in an interview, but um, playing a fox and goose on a Friday or Saturday night and making a thousand dollars blew our minds. Like. <laughs> Because we come, we come from, you know, we came from that place where, you know, we get thrown fifty dollars or a hundred dollars for a show. So making a thousand dollars in a night playing a show was just like, hey, maybe we should open this bank account. Now there's a couple grand in there. You know, what should we do with this? You know, it only makes sense for us to record an album. And it's just been, it's kind of been like kind of laying out there. You know, it's been like, you know, every time we have enough money, you know, it makes sense for us to record an album. You know, then we get to put it out, and you know, based on that album, you know, we're able to spread out a little bit farther and play the Bay Area and be able to repeat those venues and kind of draw some fans there. Yeah, they treat us really well. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. Us really I well. mean, they... 90% of what we spent on our first album was probably money that we made at Fox and Goose. Yeah. 